This lesson is about conservation of momentum. The law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum of a closed system remains constant. A system is a group of objects and their interactions, and a closed system is a system to which no energy is added or removed. We can write the law of conservation of momentum in the form of an equation as P before equals P after. P before refers to the sum of the momentum of each object before an interaction, and P after refers to the sum of the momentum of each object after an interaction. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have two balls, a purple ball of mass 0.4 kilograms moving to the right at 12 meters per second, and a blue ball of mass 0.3 kilograms moving to the right at 10 meters per second. Because the purple ball is moving faster, there will be a collision. After the collision, the purple ball is only traveling 9.5 meters per second. Let's calculate the speed of the blue ball after the collision. Before the collision, the total momentum of the system is the momentum of object 1 plus the momentum of object 2. We can write this more practically as P before equals M1V1, which is the momentum of object 1, plus M2V2, which is the momentum of object 2. We can plug in our known values for mass and velocity, and we find that the momentum before the collision of the whole system is 7.8 kilogram meters per second. Now let's look at what's happening after the collision. After the collision, the total momentum of the system is again the sum of the momentum of object 1 and object 2. And the way we calculate the momentum of object 1 and 2 is taking each of their masses and multiplying it by their velocities. What's different this time is that one of the velocities is unknown. What's not unknown, however, is the total momentum after. We know that this is equal to the total momentum beforehand. It was 7.8 kilogram meters per second before they collided, so it's still going to be 7.8 kilogram meters per second after the collision. We now only have one unknown, and we can solve for the velocity of the blue ball and find that it's moving at 13.3 meters per second. Next, we want to come up with one generic form of a conservation of momentum equation that we can use for any type of problem we might see, and then we'll look at an example of a few different types of conservation of momentum problems. Since P before is equal to P after, we should be able to set these two expressions equal to each other. It's important to note that the two terms on the left represent the initial conditions before the objects interact with each other, and the two terms on the right represent the final condition after the objects have interacted. But I think we'll get used to understanding that before is on the left and after is on the right. We could use this equation for conservation of momentum to solve for a variety of things. For instance, we could solve for an individual velocity before the interaction or an individual velocity after the interaction, like we did already. Instead of solving for an individual velocity, we could solve for the momentum of one of the objects before or after the collision. Instead of that, we might want to calculate the entire momentum of the system before or after an interaction. Pay close attention to what the question is asking so you know what individual term or terms to solve for. There are three types of problems we'll see that involve conservation of momentum. We've already seen the first type, these are called elastic collisions. This is when two objects collide and bounce off each other. It could be a rear-end collision like we saw before. It could be a head-on collision. One of the objects can start out at rest. They can both start out with motion. There's a lot of options. The next type of problem is called an inelastic collision. This is when two objects collide and for some reason they stick together. And they subsequently move as if they are one object. Finally, there are problems that we call explosions. Explosion problems are simply when two objects start out together at rest and then move apart from each other for some reason. Let's take a look at another example of an elastic collision and see how we can apply our conservation of momentum equation. Similar objects as before, we have a purple ball with a mass of 1 kilogram moving 12 meters per second which is going to have a rear-end collision with a blue ball of mass 4 kilograms moving only 3 meters per second. 
After they collide with each other, the purple ball is going to rebound and head to the left at 4 meters per second, and the blue ball will still be heading to the right, and we want to figure out how fast it will be moving. Let's start with our full conservation of momentum equation. This can look a little overwhelming, but if we look at everything we know about these objects before and everything we know about these objects after, it will become evident that of all of these variables, there's just one unknown. We know the mass and velocity of both objects before they collide, and we know the mass of both objects after they collide, and we know one of the velocities. This is a good opportunity to remember that velocity is a vector and momentum is a vector. So when the purple ball changes direction after the collision, the 4 meters per second, which is to the left, has to have the opposite sign of the 12 meters per second when it was moving to the right. If we do some multiplication and some addition and some more addition and some division, we'll find that the velocity of the blue ball after the collision is positive 7 meters per second. Now let's take a look at an inelastic collision. Let's say we have something kind of sticky like a big blob of clay being thrown at a large box at rest on a frictionless surface. Let's say the blob of clay is 1.2 kilograms traveling 16 meters per second and the box is 9 kilograms at rest. After they collide, the blob of clay sticks to the block, and they travel as if they are one object with the combined mass of both objects. We want to know how fast they're moving after the collision. We'll start with our conservation of momentum equation, but we have to tweak this a little bit before we can go any farther. After they collide, because they're stuck together, both objects are traveling the same speed. It doesn't make sense to use different variables for the speed of the clay and the speed of the block. So instead of calling them v1 and v2, let's just call them both vf. We'll then have m1 vf plus m2 vf, in which case we can factor out the vf, leaving us with this form of the equation. Take note of this adjustment on the right hand side. When solving one of these problems, if you don't realize that these two objects will be traveling the same velocity after they collide, your equation will have two variables and will be unsolvable. At this point, we know all of the variables except for vf. We can plug in what we know. We can do some multiplication and addition and division and find that the final velocity of the clay in the box together will be 1.9 meters per second. Finally, let's look at an explosion problem. Here we have a cannon with a cannonball inside, and they're both at rest. The cannon has a mass of 250 kilograms, and the cannonball has a mass of 15 kilograms. Then the cannon is fired. If the cannonball flies to the right at a velocity of 50 meters per second, what is going to be the recoil velocity of the cannon? We can start with the idea that the momentum before the explosion is equal to the momentum after the explosion, which allows us to write out our conservation of momentum equation. Like we've seen before, we actually know all of these variables except one. When we substitute in our known values, we'll see that both of the objects, the cannon and the cannonball, have velocities of zero before the explosion meaning that the total momentum before the explosion is actually zero. When we do some multiplication and subtraction and division, we'll find that the recoil velocity of the cannon is negative three meters per second.